Okay, we're back. Um, I got am going to do some little wooden coasters. They're just little MDF round coasters. I'm not taping the back because I'm just going to sand off the back a little bit and then paint them a solid color probably. Uh, but I've got them on top of these little cups on top of a canvas, which is on top of four more cups. Now, what I want to do basically is be able to pour the coasters um, and then remove the coasters after getting them done and then take the paint that has spilled off the coasters and onto the canvas which is just a small canvas board so um, and then tilt that around let that run off and then that will dry. I will get some acrylic skin out of it. I will get a canvas out of it and I will get four coasters, which we will later um, seal with resin. Um, I don't know if I'll seal the painting with resin or with uh, varnish. We'll see. So, um, anyway, here we go. So I am going to give myself a little spiral of black on each coaster. I could have painted the coasters first, given them a base coat. Um, this was a last minute project that I decided to do. I wasn't planning on doing another project while I was up here but um, today. But I decided I was going to. Now you can see, because I didn't put a base coat in, you can see that the wood is starting to absorb the paint. You can see the little bleeding. So if I was looking to paint like a picture or something on it, I would definitely want to coat these beforehand with some paint to give it an acrylic um, skin so that the paint sits on top. Um, now I'm going to use a little white. As you can see, I'm pouring straight out of my bottles because these are already mixed with um, my pouring medium and water. Okay. And then I'm going to go with a little copper. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Okay. Let's see, I've got some, um, I was just mixing up a color of kind of a peacock blue. It's in the cup here. I'll need to put it in a container when we're done, if there's any left over. We'll put some of that in. And now the paint will absorb here. not worry about splatters down below because we're hoping that that's going to take some uh, of the paint anyway. I've got a lot of paint on these, but again, I am looking for some spillage. Mm -hmm. Whoops, there we go. Alright. And I want some gold. I don't know if you can kind of get an idea of the color scheme I'm going for here. And uh, some green. Now oh, this is an awful lot of paint. Okay. And a little silver. So let's get some silver. Whoops. If I can pop the lid off without getting paint everywhere. There we go. A little silver. Just a dab. Okay. Now, let's see what we're going here. I want to move them around so I can get some of this paint. 
covering the coasters. Round and around. And I've already got paint all over my hands, so I am not going to worry about gloves because, well, I'm just not. Okay. Now that white is completely buried. Mm-hmm. And that green is completely taken over, so we're going to see if we can. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to move some of the colors so that it's not completely green. And I definitely want paint around the edges of this piece. Okay, I got an awful lot of green. I'm losing that silver, so I'm gonna tilt it back. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, tilting it back so I can get some of the silver back in play. And again, the green takes over. Okay, I think that's kind of pretty. Okay. Now I'm going to go around and around, try to get some on the edges there. Get some coming off the edge here. Okay, and here. And around there, try to keep some of the colors on the coaster so that it's not all green. I'm going to have to come this way some because it's not coming to the edge. Okay. And then again, that green is really taken over. Okay. I think that one looks pretty good. Okay, same thing here, around and around we go, love these round coasters. Trying to get some paint, make sure the edges are covered in paint, which I can also do at the end. See my big old thumbprint there. And I always get paint all over me when I paint. Glue, when I'm using glue, I end up with it all over me. I. I'll wear gloves when I'm working with resin and sometimes when I'm working with paint, depending on what I'm doing, but given a choice, I prefer to go gloveless. It's just, I like getting my hands dirty. I think it's part of the pleasure of the art. Do you remember finger painting? Well, it's kind of like that. It was just that satisfaction of getting the paint on your fingers, your hands. Now, I've got to come up with some kind of smocks for my kids because um, I wear an apron a lot of times when I'm up here painting and that's fine for me but the apron is like a cooking apron. It's, it's just got the bib on the front and my son, when he paints, he gets paint everywhere. I mean, he had it in his hair, he had it on his neck, on his ears, his face. So I'm looking for something that's gonna give a little better coverage. I'm also gonna just designate some clothes as their painting clothes that they're gonna have to wear every time because there's no chance that an outfit that they wear will survive 
paint free when they're up here painting. And they're going to be doing a lot more painting um, now that the adoption is final, which I think I mentioned before. Uh, we're planning on taking them out of school and homeschooling them. We just feel that they can get a better education. Uh, my daughter has special needs and the curriculum that they're using for her is not special needs. So she is just totally lost and doesn't understand it. And they just seem to be not getting why. Um, so we're just going to take them out and homeschool them. That way I can do the curriculum based on what they need to be learning. Okay, now I like these coasters. I like the way they've come out. Um, I do not believe that all of that paint that we had on them, I did not get a whole lot of spillover onto the canvas, so we will be adding more paint to the canvas. So I'm just going to move these over to, I have another tray prepared for them to sit and drip on. Um, I think these will be very nice for somebody who has greens and blues in their house. Okay, so see how it did not drip as much as I thought it would because I used a lot of paint on those coasters. I expected a lot more drippage, but I was really trying to keep the colors on the coasters. So we will be adding more, okay? Uh, same colors. The black around. We'll just go around the edges here, try to keep some towards the outside and a little on the end. Okay, go with the black. I'm going to go with the silver. We really like the silver. Um, I've got some turquoise. Uh, let's see, we have some copper. The white. A little green. Let's not go so crazy on the green on this one, huh? And let's see, the gold. Okay, let's see what takes over this time, okay? Oh, I'm already starting to get some interesting color patterns there. Okay, let's see. We will go, can you see? Am I still in frame? Okay, coming down, I'm getting a corner. Keep going down a little bit more. See if I can get some of this paint to get close to the edges. Let's go back that way some. Remember, this does not have a stretched edge, so I 
touch that and I get that to run a little bit better there. Cover the, break that surface tension. So this is not a stretched canvas, so I'm not quite as concerned about trying to get the design to fold over the sides. I really just want the paint to go to the edges and then try to get some decent des decent design in here. Um, the thing about the paint pouring, I mean, it's going to do what it's going to do. Um, when you're tilting the canvas, now if you tilt it s slightly rather than all the way up here, the paint's going to run slower and it's going to stretch out the designs. If you tilt it extremely steep, your designs are going to be elongated and skinnier because the paint's going to be running faster. So sometimes to get the best designs, you want the paint to move quite slowly. Just to see if I can get some paint on the roof. This is why sometimes I will coat a canvas in wet paint before I get started. These little um, canvas boards though, they tend to warp with these paint pours because there's so much liquid, so much water in the paint, in the acrylic paints. So they tend to warp, so I don't really want to add a whole nother coat of paint underneath because that's just more liquid. Um, I've tried doing the popsicle sticks on the back. It worked somewhat. Um, to protect against warping, but not completely. I did see um, one artist say that she paints both the front and the back of her little canvas boards and lets them dry thoroughly before she does a paint pour on them, and that seems to help her not have the curling issue. So I may try that with some uh, for the next go round and we'll see how they do. Uh, because canvas boards are a lot cheaper than stretch canvas. Um, so if you're just getting started in acrylic paint pour and you're going to be doing a lot of practice pieces canvas boards are going to be a lot more cost effective for you. So if we can find a way to keep them from warping and curling up from the expansion and contraction process of drying paint, then that's going to help a lot with the budget. So we'll try that maybe on another go round. Um, I'll give the front and the back of a uh, canvas, a couple of canvases, a, a nice coat of acrylic paint to see if we can eliminate some of the warping. Okay, so I want to get some of the wet paint off of my hands before I grab my torch over here. Okay. I don't believe I ever used any of this uh, peacock color on this one. I think I might like that a little bit better. I'd mix that up. I don't think I grabbed it for this. I know I did it on coasters. Um, let's see. 
Don't you just love it when you have a last minute add, addition of color? You think you've got a finished piece and then you change your mind. that to move in some and get dragged into some of the other colors. Maybe I should have just left that out. Maybe I should have just left that out. Turning it almost vertical here. See if I can get some of that paint to move. Bring some of that color that I've got going on here back towards the middle of the painting. Okay, I did not add anything to this paint for cells. And yet, we have a lot of lacing and a lot of cells. This is just straight Elmer's glue all and paint with a little water to thin it out. That is all that is here, seriously. It's not very good canvases. This stuff's not even glued down good. Okay. All right, so there's the painting. And if you see, there's uh, some nice uh, paint happening down below. I can see enough to make several pendants um, with some pretty colors in them. So we will leave that. Wipe my fingers down there. Okay, grab another wipe. And we will call this one a day. Um, please, if you're enjoying the channel at all, please like and subscribe. Um, if you comment, you will be entered into the drawing for the 25 subscribers when we hit that. And uh, then after that, um, we will be drawing for 50, when we hit the 50 subscriber mark and so on and so forth. And I will be giving away some, hopefully, some nice prizes. So... Help me out here, folks. Give me a like and a subscribe and a comment. Comment anything you want. Be kind, please. I'm kind to you. Be kind to me. And um, happy crafting. Hope that you find your time to do something creative, something you enjoy. 
great to unplug and just do something just for the pure sake of doing it.